Hello, I am Leopoldo Armesto and in this video I will talk about motor types that are frequently used in mobile robots. This is the presentation outline. We will talk about motor types and we will focus on direct current motors and the elements for the position and speed control including the motor drive. Uh, we will also talk about the servo motors and stepper motors. And finally, we will uh, have some additional uh, mechanism or will describe some additional mechanisms that are uh, usually included in many robots. Here I have ordered from left to right the most used motors that we can find in robotics. The most common ones are during uh, current or DC motors, mainly because many robots run on batteries. Within DC motors we can find brushed or brushless DC motors. They are easily or they are easy to control and modify their speed and this is one of the reasons that also they are widely used in, in many robotics applications. But they require a, a feedback control system to control either the torque, speed or position. In some cases, some robots use stepper motors and can be classified as permanent magnet or variable reluctance uh, steppers being permanent magnet ones, the, the most common ones used. We can find unipolar or bipolar stepper motors. Step, a stepper motor uh, is very precise and operates in open loop and are easy to control their position or speed, but uh, we cannot control the torque. And we might indeed may lose steps if the torque that we need in order to move the load is too high. Some robots, especially in industrial applications that require a motor to rotate at a high speed, use alternate current or AC motors. Here we can find asynchronous motors in which the speed of the rotor rotates at a different speed than the speed of the stator, uh, or generate of the, 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 the signal generated in the stator, or uh, the synchronous motors in which the speed of both uh, stator and rotor coincides. Uh, some of these motors have a cage-shaped rotor with bars that is known as squirrel cage motors. Uh, finally, although they are less common in robotic applications, we can also find pneumatic motors using compressed air or hydraulic motors using oil. DC rotary motors can be classified, as I said before, into brushed or unbrushless motors. Brushed motors have two poles uh, on the rotor that uh, are in permanent contact with two brushes and the rotation of the rotor itself causes the poles to switch. Because the stator has a magnet um, in, in, the, in, the, in this kind of motors. In brushless motors, uh, the switching is done electronically and the stator includes coils and the rotor uh, includes a magnet. They have uh, the brushless. I mean, they have greater efficiency, are more silent and reliable, and require less maintenance. But the or their electronics are more complex. Both are supplies, or in, in both cases, what we supply is a different current voltage, and their speed is regulated by switching using PWM signals in the in the control electronics. The most common ones in mobile robots are brushed motors, but in some applications, such as drones, we use brushless motors. Whatever the motor, it must add as a servo motor, that is a motor that can control the air torque, speed or position, and um, using some sensor that fix the corresponding signal. Whatever the motor is, it will require a motor driver responsible for supplying the power demands that the motor needs. We will discuss this later. Without going into too many details, we will see the motor as an element that has an electrical circuit and a mechanical part, depending uh, on the load it must move. After applying a direct voltage V, which can be obviously um, modify its value, it passes through the electrical circuit formed by resistance R and a coil L, which corresponds, for instance, with the rotor windings of a DC motor with brushes. Uh, the counter electromotive force, VE, 
is the voltage that is generated in the motor as a consequence of the rotation of the motor through a magnetic field and depends directly on the uh, omega, the rotation speed. The torque provided by a motor field depends directly, uh, sorry, uh, depends on the current, I, and the torque is named as Tm. And that torque uh, uh, causes uh, 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 to the mechanical part to rotate, and the net torque is indeed the motor torque minus the load torque, T load which will cause the actual uh, rotation uh, on the motor that depends on the inertia J and the viscous friction V. The mathematical expressions that I indicate here are commonly used to model the dynamics behavior of a DC motor. If there are no energy losses, Km and Kv are equal in this case. In the following diagram, we see that the motor can be modeled as a second-order system combining the dynamics of the electrical part and the mechanical part. Although, as it can be seen in the both diagram in the figure below, one of the poles is clearly slower than the other, which makes, uh, makes, makes it uh, clearly uh, dominant. And these poles, of course, correspond to the mechanical part. Therefore, ignoring the coil of the electrical part to ignore that pole, and also uh, the vis viscous uh, friction, uh, the response of the motor is fundamentally uh, a consequence of the inertia of the mechanical part and some gain, uh, so sometimes we use this simplified first order model um, instead of the second order model, and as you can see, at low frequency, the responses are practically uh, identical. The motor driver uh, is a very important element for controlling the motor. It is responsible for supplying the energy in the form of a voltage and indirectly a current when passing through the ele electric part of the motor. And this current is the, 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 it, it, it's needed by the motor in order to generate the, the torque, as we saw before. But uh, the low power signals that we use in microcontrollers in order to modify this high power voltage uh, requires some, some kind of isolation and therefore part of the task of a motor driver consists of amplifying and properly conditioning the signals to the motor also protect, them, protect the motor from high voltage peaks uh, that could much damage the, 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 the electronics and isolate the, 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 the controller from the power electronics in the case of direct current motors, uh, the power uh, drive uh, or the motor drive is usually made of a set of transistors or MOSFETs that control the current in a structure known as H-bridge. In, um, in brushless motors, the configuration uh, also uses an H-bridge, but in this case we, we, we need three of them. Diodes, uh, you can see in, on those uh, figures, are used to protect the transistors or MOSFETs uh, from high voltage peaks that appear when they switch from on to off um, due to the motor coil. The way to control the motor is through a PWM signal, that is a signal that switches a high, at a high uh, frequency, and we can regulate, uh, in this case, the time uh, where the, the signal is on compared to the time where the signal is off. And since it's a high frequency signal, this will be seen from, uh, from the uh, motor uh, uh, electronics as a low-pass filter and, and thus that means that will be seen as a variable voltage uh, that we can apply to the motor in despite of the fact that the actual motor, uh, the voltage we apply is fixed. Depending on the transistors uh, we activate, uh, the current will flow in one direction or the opposite direction, and this is indicated with the blue and red arrows here on the figure on the left. Many motor drivers allow to adjust uh, the PWM signal limiter to uh, limit indeed the, the actual average voltage that can be applied to the motor in order to not to exceed some kind of value. And this is that because sometimes uh, the, the maximum voltage that is supported by the motor is not directly compatible with the voltage that we uh, provide with the power supply system. 
Uh, here I show two motor drivers. One on the left is a low-cost motor driver used for brush DC motors, uh, while the one on the right is a motor driver that can be controlled uh, or can be used to control brush or brushless DC motors. Of course, prices vary depending from few viewers to hundreds of them depending on the motor driver model. Motor drivers can control motors in voltage mode or current mode, although the most basic one mode is uh, the voltage mode. Uh, in this mode, indeed, uh, a PD controller can be used uh, in order to control the position, and the controller must generate a PWM signal that we will apply to the motor through the motor driver. For controlling the position of a motor in current mode, the controller must generate a reference current indeed, not, a, uh, not in this case directly the PWM signal, because this signal is internally uh, generated by, uh, by a feedback uh, uh, loop in which we, uh, in this case, uh, measure the, the, the current of the motor. The advantage of controlling the position of a motor with a current-based control uh, motor drive is that we can limit the maximum current that we want and that will help us to prevent the motor for, uh, from being damaged if it gets stalled or because we want to limit the maximum torque we want to uh, generate with this motor in order to avoid, let's say, objects that we, the, a robot, let's say, collides with the environment or whatever. In a similar way, we could do a speed control. In this case, uh, we can use a PI control. The most common configuration here is to use a motor driver in voltage mode, and in this case the controller will generate the PWM signal that the, the motor needs in order to rotate at the desired speed. The integral action uh, ensures that uh, we reach that speed at a steady state, although it is advisable and usually included some kind of anti wind up system that resets the term accumulating, uh, the, 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 in this case, the error of uh, of the of the um, of the position, uh, and and this is uh, using uh, particularly when uh, so we only usually integrate this error when it's within some certain bounds. Some robots incorporate or use RC servos, particularly low cost low cost robots. Uh, this is a standard frequently used in airplane radio control uh, models. Uh, that they use a signal uh, under the chronic PPM. It's a very, a sim very similar to the PWM signal. It's a periodic signal that has a period of about 20 milliseconds, and the activation or the on time of these signals is between 0 0.5 milliseconds and 2.5 milliseconds. The rest of the time the signal is in off state. And the pulse width of this on-time period indicates indeed the position in which we want to move the servo, which normally oscillates between 0 degrees and 180 degrees, being in this case 90 degrees the neutral position. They come in different sizes depending on the required torque and the application, and the principle of operation is very simple. An operational amplifier regulates the current that must flow through a, a brushed DC motor and uh, the potentiometer is fixed to the, the, the shaft and the axis of the, of the motor that provides the feedback signal that the um, operational amplifier needs. Uh, on the other hand, we have continuous rotation servos, also known as 360 degree servos, and they use exactly the same uh, uh, signal as uh, standard RC servos, but their feedback in this case, or the feedback of the potentiometer is not implemented and any deviation from the, the reference position of 90 degrees is usually used to, or to drive a current to the motor so that will generate the speed that we need in open loop. Well, stepper motor uh, can be unipolar or bipolar. Unipolar ones are cheaper and easier to control, while bipolar ones offer a greater precision and torque. Uh, as it can be seen in the figure below, and in order to generate the motor rotation, we must execute an, a sequence of activations on the motor coils. In the case of unipolar motors, the signals do not change the polarity. And for this reason, the, the electronics uh, required for this motor are simpler. While in bipolar motors, the uh, current is reversed, 
which implies that the control electronic must be able to switch the polarity. The speed of the motor is controlled by the frequency in which we generate those, those steps. Robots, in addition to uh, the mobile base, also uh, they have a built-in mechanisms that allow to uh, uh, transmit movements from one joint to another joint. It is very common to have different type of uh, mechanisms such as gears, chains, belts. Here I show some of them. I put the names so you can recognize them uh, together with the, with the image. And in particular, I would like to highlight harmonic gears, also known as harmonic drives. Uh, they are very compact, light, and with high transmission uh, ratio. And these kind of uh, gears are um, widely used in industrial robot applications. Also, for instance, a caterpillar. Bells that are used uh, by some robots as locomotion uh, mechanism, and also um, other type of uh, indiscrete mechanisms, such as universal joints, spherical joints, ball bearings, that are widely used in many robots. And finally, also some robots include also other kind of mechanisms. In this case, for instance, a robot arm or top of the mobile base. This is known as mobile manipulator. Other robots use a gripper in order to pick or objects or a PTU, a pan tilt unit. It's a platform that, as its name indicates, it's used to pan or tilt a device, for instance, a camera, in order to point to some direction. Well, in this presentation, I have introduced the types of motors that we use in mobile robots. Thank you very much.